All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make a void form now in the second part that goes through this um, conceptual mass that we've created. So to do that, I'm going to go to level one. And I'm going to use a reference line. Reference lines um, do not go away or are not subsumed into the uh, create form process, so you can still access them and manipulate them afterwards, and that's what I want to be able to do with this guy. So I'm going to go to the create tab, I'm going to go to reference line, and I'm going to actually do a spline through points. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy out of here, and I'm going to make it go to the work plane. Because otherwise it will want to snap to faces, and I don't really want it to do that. I just want it to go to the work plane. So I'm going to come, and I have this idea that it will start small and get quite a bit larger as it moves through. So I now have that spline, and if I go to my 3D view, default 3D view, you can see it. I go to wireframe. Now, right after I once I've made this, I can actually pick these points and it'll give me an offset number. So I want this to sort of slope up. So I'm going to give this an offset of 10 feet. And then I'm going to pick this one. And I'm going to give it an offset of, let's say, about 15 feet. All right. And then I'll pick this one and maybe 25 feet, All right? And then we'll pick this one and we'll put it at maybe 40 feet. Okay, so now I have sort of this spline going through um, this model. Um, now, one thing that I have found it's a little unusual, I'll give it a test, is that if I now go and change my family types, so let's say I change that to 40 by 40, and I hit apply, that spline has now somehow connected itself to the size of those, and I don't really want it to do that. I want it to be separate. So in order to do that, I need to come in and pick those reference lines, those reference points, and I need the reference points only, so I've just picked all those reference points. If you, you can filter your selection here if you want to, if you get more than reference points, but you only want the reference points. And you want to go through and say, get rid of the check driven by host. And if you do that, now when I go to switch and hit apply, it's actually independent of what it perceived to be the host, which I guess was these reference points. So it's a little weird, but I'll go ahead and do it. Now the next thing I want to be able to do is I want to be able to sweep along here a series of profiles. And in order to do that, I have to put some points on here so I can make the profiles on those points. So there's a little point command, and I'm going to click on that, and I want to make sure that draw on face is selected because that will allow those points to host to this particular line. You can see I'm getting a big no right now, but if I go to, right, it will go ahead and allow me to place points on this line. All right. Not sure. It's kind of weird that it won't allow me to put another point on that line. It's being a little, being a little fussy about that. There it goes. Must have just been the uh, the view. So now I have a series of points on that line. Now I can place profiles on those points. The thing that I need to do is I actually need to set those. Our little teeny tiny work planes. If I pick them, you can see. They're little teeny tiny work planes, and I need to set them current and draw on them. So in order to set them current, I need to go to the set, and I need to pick them, and that will make it current. Now you can tell it to show the work plane if it makes you nervous. So here's that work plane, and I've turned that show on so you can see which one is current. 
And then I'm just, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to make some reference circles here. And I want it now to draw on work plane because I want it to draw on those work planes that I'm setting. So I'm just going to use that. And then I'm going to go to set. And I'll set that one. And I'll draw another circle because the circle command will stay current even. Oops. Even when I'm using the set command. So set. And now circle is still current, which is pretty cool. So right now I'm not really paying a whole lot of super attention to what the size is. I'm just getting those circles on there. I do know I want it to get bigger as it gets up here. So now you do want to make sure that like in this case that these circles don't overlap because it will get real mad. And if it self intersects, it just will not work. So basically I want these to be small and I want it to get larger as they go up. So let's check the size of that circle. That's an eight foot circle. Let's go ahead and make it four feet. That's kind of the minimum size I'm going to use. And this guy's eight feet. Maybe we'll make that six. So I'm just using these listening dimensions that come up on everything that you pick. So there's an eight foot one. That's fine. And then maybe we do 10 here. Right. And that one got really big. So that's a 20 foot one. And then maybe it goes to 12 or maybe it goes back to 10, right? As it comes out. Now, one thing you could do that's interesting is you could actually put a parameter or say you always wanted this circle and that circle to be the same. You could put a parameter on these dimensions. So if I go in and pick that dimension and pick that dimension, I could do that same labeling that we did last time and call it radius, radius medium. And then if I go to my type dialog box, that will be there, right? The radius medium. And I could change it to whatever I want. So if I wanted it to be 12, I could change it to 12, and if I hit apply, which I'm doing right now, you'll see both of those are now connected, right? But I'll leave it at 10 for right now. Move the width back up there. Click OK. All right, so now what I can do is I can actually pick these guys. and the spline, and I can go to Create Form. And it will create, if I go to Shaded, right, I've now got this form that's kind of rolling through here. Now, the thing that is interesting is that that reference line is still there, right? So I can actually, if I go to Wireframe, if I want it to do something a little differently, I can actually still control, if I tab select into these, I can actually move right this around and it will update that form right it, so now it moved that it moved that over or i could do the same thing i could pick that and i could move that you know over and up and sometimes it will you know self intersect so you'll have to cancel out of it and maybe not be so dramatic in your movements right so some you know it's it does have its limitations. So now, once I've got that guy in there, I can actually go back to my shaded. I can pick that, and I can actually change it to a void. So over on the left is a void. And now I have that void form moving through there. And I still have access to, you know, not only these guys, so I could move that, you know, let's see how, see how mad I can make it. There we go. See, it took that one. So it's actually going around like that. Um, and I can also, of course, change the size of the circles and it would update those, right? So if I came in here and changed my mediums, right? I've had that medium family type right there. If I change that to say 15, and hit apply, both of those would get larger and it would make the circles larger. Now the other thing that I can do at this point is that I can come in and adjust, you know, 
spin this around so we can see a little better. But I can adjust the edges. So like if I wanted to come in, I left this as a model, so I could come in and adjust that so you can start to see, you know, how that could possibly adjust. So, so if I pick this, I could also adjust, let's say, a point. And let's bring that point in like that. Right. Now it's going to have to think for a while. And maybe I move that in. And you start to get, you know, these different... You could also bring points up and down, so I could bring that down. So you have a lot of, you know, different things you can be working with. I could add more voids, you know, in here. So now I've got that sort of thing going on. The other thing I can start to do, which we'll see how effective this is with this one, is I could come into, let's pan over to the side here. I could come into my family types and I can actually change those types. So if I go to 60, the 60 and 40 by 40 and I hit apply, right now it's squeezing that bottom in. And I can go to 20 by 20 and hit apply and now it's squeezing that bottom in even more, right? So you can start to come in and adjust these things, you know, and get a very different look out of it based on these different parametric controls. So you have controls that are basically set up by dimensions. You have these controls that are manual controls where you can pull pieces around. Um, and then you have just individual sort of free form options. Okay. All right. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to pull one of these forms into the uh, project that we've been working on.